the Renko as we start this one up. At least once again for Misfits Academy, really don't want to face up against Lulex on that. At least he played it the last time these two teams met and was devastating on it. So it's Camille not banning too him. much of a surprise. Do you really think Camille ban? <laughs> I first think rotation? it's either a, a ban or a first rotation for Misfits Academy. I think it ended up being too good that unless they're going to play the Renekton into it, I think Misfits Academy should get rid of it. Previous games, they've got rid of uh, Gragas and Ivern in on the red side would be the first uh, the third ban that comes through i wouldn't be surprised in all honesty if camille gets let through a little bit more because that renekton pack counter pick is available and because i'm not sure Schalke will pick it up in the first rotation but i might be shocked i might be wrong lulu is the first ban Ooh, and mal zaha actually taken good. away from misfits i like that mal's ban likely would have been a first pick coming through from Schalke. uh now Schalke kind of look at other areas supports Lulu Mal's are now gone, so maybe a Zyra, but I don't know whether you first picked that at this point. Uh, you look to the top lane if they want that Nautilus. I know it's a away from the Camille, but you could Camille here as well. Things like Karzix is still available, Lee Sin. Tom Kench actually a priority for Misfits thus far. It's been picked up for Schalke this time out. Yeah, and Tom Kench has, has been a, a great champion for supports like Vander, who want to play make get themselves across the map and set things uh, up in their favor. So I like it out of Schalke. They deny it from Dreams as well. This draft uh, with the Tom Kench pick is looking a lot more like the drafts that Schalke won week five with. They had that Tom Kench in both the games, at least in both the games as well, which Misfits Academy is obviously respecting with that at least ban. The Karma lock in here for Misfits is uh, reminiscent as well of that era. So I, this feels to me much more like Misfits Academy are starting yeah. to go back to what they did in the actual Challenger split. Lee Sin again here then out of Schalke would make sense. You could go Kha'Zix is the other one, but I agree with you. Going more towards what we saw out of them week on week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hadn't seen it fully before. See, that's what I meant. I, I could see what you mean. Windswept. <laughs> Windswept. <laughs> and if it's Lee Sin again, I think that's... Uh, goes in favor. It's, it's He's been charging this up now for, yeah. for four Just games. Just takes, takes you a couple of games to really, you know, get those Dragon Balls, charge yourself up. I never actually watched Dragon Balls either did as a child. I, so that's about <laughs> as far, as, 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 far as we could go with that analogy. But now Schalke looking for their final pick. There's a lot available here. You could pick safe mid. You could pick your AD carry if you wanted. Talia works. They got it. Uh, I think that's a good setup. Because So there aren't too, too many matchups that Talia can get punished with. I mean, you push out, you're looking to snowball other lanes. You're not necessarily working for yourself, but I was going to say, if there's one thing that Talia can struggle with, it's all-in and mobility, and that is exactly what Koski wants to bring. Yeah, and the one time Koski played Katarina in the actual split, he went 8, 4, and 17 in his game. So he is very adept at working his magic with Katarina. Camille banned for Misfits Academy on the second rotation. No real surprises there. And now we'll see what Schalke wants to focus out. Could be the AD carry role. Could, of course, be top as well. I think if you ban away top laners here, Misfits Academy are in a, a rough spot. As you said, also, AD carry, but both teams are still looking for their AD. So Ezreal, Caitlyn, Jin, all available. We've seen a lot of Caitlyn and a lot of Ash is the other pick we've seen. Yeah, you played back Ash in every single game, I think, yep. isn't he? Uh, I believe that is the case. We're both double checking now. Yeah, he has. Misfits Academy have played Ash in all three games. It's going to be the top lane focus here, though, with the Rumble ban away from Jisoo. He had such impact on that game one. Next up, I would not be surprised at all if we saw Nautilus getting taken off the card here. I think it's a solid ban here. I also Ooh. like, uh, or I would normally like Misfits. Uh, this Ash ban thing is Misfits Academy clearly not prepared to first pick here. They want to get priority over the uh, blind pickable top laners, I suppose. It seems a little bit odd because you have the option to counter pick your top or pick an AD carry second. And with the Gragas off the cards, Jisoo's really falling back to the Nautilus here. And look at what they're doing. Like Schalke taking away the AP top laners uh, and forcing Misfits to only have basically one real source of magic damage in a Cat Arena. Mm -hmm. That if, if Cat falls behind, is not going to have that kind of impact in fights, right? Like, yes, she does obviously snowball incredibly heavily, but. Uh, it's not reliable. And sometimes it can be difficult to get on towards that, uh, that Talia as well. It's going to be the Nautilus pick here for Misfits Academy, picking a safe top laner. They know there aren't really any main counters available. Even Renekton struggles at times yeah, we, in that we, matchup. We may still see the Renekton come through, though. Um, a, a backline AD carry right here. Jin will have a lot of distance away from this Katarina. And if we do end up seeing something uh, like 
Uh, there's like Maokai Trundle that could be played. Smitty J is a known Trundle player um, for a long time. Vizichachi from the Unicorns of Love has played it into tanks and wouldn't be the worst of matchups. Oh, <laughs> we were looking for a lane to snowball. Well, there's one for you. We saw this attempted in the LCS by, I think it was Fnatic this past week. Um, no, it was Rocket against Fnatic, and Rocket ended up losing in game one. That's a, a great Kled pickup, and it's going to be the Ezreal finally here for Misfits Academy. I'm a little bit worried for Misfits because of their inability to actually CC someone to crowd control them. Really, they only have the Nautilus for that, and then you've got the Tarm Kench Devourer. So usually I, I was worried with the Jin pick yep. because they can get jumped on really easily, but having the Tarm Kench there provides you a lot more safety. Oh, I'm worried for Misfits Academy here. If, if cos -Q doesn't snowball, their only real damage source for a long time in this game is going to be Pride Stalker, but that's a big if. You've got to try and stop this Talia going over to the Kled lane and denying that kind of uh, snowball from topside. There's such speed as well from yeah. Shalkin Ulfa. You've got Abyssal Voyage, you've got Weaver's Wall, you've got the Charge, which you have to say that way, I've been told by the Riot Overlords. So <laughs> <laughs> it's the same with Nah. You have, if it's got an exclamation mark That's after true. it, you have to say it like that. Super Mega Death Rocket! They're all exclamation mark abilities. <laughs> I didn't know that that was, uh, that was the thing. Yeah, as a color caster, you wouldn't really need to think about it too much. I guess but not. Play by players have to think about it. And you know what you guys need to think about tweeting in at us with the hashtag EUCS. If you think Schalke Nullfear will take us to Silver Scrapes in the game five, it's hashtag S04win. If you think Misfits Academy will close it out and take their spot in the EU LCS promotion tournament, hashtag MFAWin. Gonna get on to Summoner's Rift in just a second stress. You're worried, are you, for Misfits Academy here? A little bit, a little bit. We've gone the other way on the draft, although CosQ and his Katarina, you mentioned it, has played it before, had a good game on it. 8-4-17 is a pretty diabolical game. It can be destructive and devastating. It'll get you an S-plus in most solo queue games as well, which is the important thing, of course, getting those mastery points. <laughs> I don't think that's quite what the players have on their mind of being on the line right now, since uh, a win in this series, Misfits Academy, if they pick up this one game, will make it to the promotion tournament. Opposite, potentially, Origin, who have already uh, been put in that promotion tournament spot. Schalke still need two games to get that. Well, for Schalke, this is just a normal, regular day. EU Spring Split, Challenger Series Spring Split, isn't it? You know, need to just 2-0 an opponent. <laughs> They've done it five times before. Perhaps they can do it once again. <laughs> Misfits Academy will be looking for that final elusive win that was so close to their grasp. I think if I were Misfits Academy, I'd be slightly bolstered by the fact that last game, they didn't get ahead and lose. They just, you just lost the game. It's not like you had a lead and you were this close and then you, it fell through your fingers. They just That's lost true. the game. So here, they can reset, they can rethink and they can try and just shut Schalke down. Selfie came bot just to try and harass down. Of course, we'll have that passive to uh, move back up to mid lane quickly. And that's one of the reasons why you can do this. Of course, Ignite on this Katarina. Selfie opting for exhaust, Vanda opting for exhaust. Um, it's almost like Cat needs a lot of damage to, or, or like puts out a lot of damage and ends up resetting. As much as there have been exhaust nerfs, we still see it into like Zed into yeah. Katarina. Double still, exhaust is so good. Still good against mages because the the damage reduction part of it is still absolutely worthwhile. Another thing that is gonna throw a spanner in the works in this is is oddly the Kled up against the Katarina at times because obviously Kled has a moment where he becomes um, untargetable and won't take damage mm -hmm. as he jumps off Skull. So there is that moment where Smitty J will be prolonging fights and also has that bear trap. So if uh, Death Lotus does go off, you can pull the trap. It takes a little bit of time to set that trap. It, does. Gonna, uh, it ma does. Make it a little bit more difficult. But they've got, you know, Seismic Shove, you've got Kick, you've got Vanda who can devour up an opponent as well or devour someone caught in the Death Lotus. Mm. So there are many ways for Schalke to deal with that Katarina. Look at what Selfie's doing here. Is uh, started the recall to try and I don't know whether he was faking going back from the lane, but at least he's dropping back to try and defend. Um, doesn't really feel confident enough to like take any of the Raptors. It's early on, so doesn't want to steal that much experience from Lulex, but nevertheless, 
trying to keep Cosq guessing where he is in the lane at all times, trying to defend against Pride Stalker. It stops Pride Stalker being able to go in through those Raptor steals as well that we've been yeah. talking about so much. So much XP just on those small ones, even if you can take two or three away. You can really slow down the enemy jungler. Both junglers parting down towards the bottom side. Looks like Lulex is doing a slightly slower clear as he uh, begins just to set up around his red buff. We do have a pause coming out. Uh, yeah. We'll find out what's going on exactly here as we wait to get back on into the game. I think I can give an update upset. <laughs> he uh, was frantically kind of pulling his mouse. I believe it's a mouse issue. Uh, we'll wait to get that. Yeah, we'll get it confirmed. confirmed. We know it is a Schalke pause, and Upset <laughs> does look like he's uh, switching things and yeah. some things out, so we'll have to just wait and see to make sure we know exactly what's going on. But what's going on in this early game? Not much at the moment, Stress. Not much, but it's still, that's to be expected. Um, we're only at level three. We've not had any shenanigans. It was a mouse issue with Upset. Gives a wink to the camera. <laughs> he's uh, <laughs> trying to showboat. Well, <laughs> just... <laughs> Oh, I just the, the wink caught me off guard, in all yeah. honesty. I'm used to being the one winking at the camera rather than being winked at. And uh, Upset's still obviously confident in the, the fact that Shao can win this. After the last game, yeah. I think you would be. Uh, they, they played incredibly well. If you were to, to predict where the early action's going to happen or if any early action's going to happen at all here, Stress, are we waiting for level six? Are we waiting for Selfie to be able to roam around the map? I'm thinking top lane. I'm thinking Selfie and Lulex are going there for this Kled to try and kill Jizu. Uh, Nautilus in the top lane. We are heading back into the game in just a second. There we go. Straight back on into the action. Nostradamus, you are today, Stress. Uh, I got told by production we were going back in. Thanks. Mate, you, you need to keep the mystery. You need to keep the magic of esports alive. <laughs> well, Misfits looking for a bit of magic of their own as they try and take down the Giants that are Schalke. But Schalke fighting back in that game three have taken us to game four. And now, once again, I've drafted a composition that has a little bit more in the early game and perhaps can fight up against this Misfits Academy squad. Bear trap accuracy, not really that great. It's not a bear. That's true. It's the problem. Probably doesn't have that much effect, really. Um, I mean, I know... It's like trying to crush metal. It exactly, really work, exactly. It? Well, I mean, there's like a whole... Anyway, you... Yeah. Bear trap, not the best thing for that. Um, Schalke, however, seeing if they can set the trap for Misfits Academy in this bottom lane, you can see Lulex upset with taking damage, trying to trade, just be like, bait them in, everything's okay. But uh, it doesn't actually result in anything. Misfits do have the pushing lane and down towards that bottom side though, and it's something we've talked about time and time again, is the ability for junglers to get some deep vision in, to track their enemy jungler, We're using these pushing lanes for quicker reactions from their teammates if they go for something aggressive. Mm -hmm. Here we see them just pushing back that Jin and the Tom Kench, which is to be expected, and oh, yeah. they're not actually able to do much around it yet. Yeah, of course, Tom Kench, especially early levels, doesn't really have any ability to uh, counter any push. Lulex going in aggressive topside. Uh, may not have wanted that, but gets out alive. Jumps away. Koski's going to come in from Good the side trade. as well, but this is the power of Talia. You can track someone across the wall. I was going to say, may not have wanted it, but I was looking at what the wave was. Despite Selfie still having quite some way to go to push Koski back, Selfie had moved out of the lane first. It wasn't necessarily about the minions on this exchange. This was more about where the players themselves were. Smitty J is going to take this trade because he knows he's about to go untargetable. He's got the pocket pistol as well if he wants to try and trade back in. Tries to build that coverage oh, back up. Lulex. Lulex has flash. Flash. Ah, I was predicting way. the flash. Yeah. It looks bad. <laughs> that looks bad, but there's going to be one time yeah. where his opponent it's the flashes. Highlight reel play, exactly, it? and you pre predict it. I do that with every fresh hook in games. My teammates are like, oh, you're bad. It's like, no, they could have flashed. They, they were going to flash. It was going to be mad amazing. Life. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll get him next time. Jisoo um, TP's back into the top lane, and Smitty. This is the thing, uh, something we see a lot with Nar and with uh, with Kled is their ability to regenerate health in the lane. However, Jisoo's going aggressive and Smitty's just going to have to jump away. Can't get away from the dredge line and of course, Flash might have to be used here by Smitty J. Gets underneath his tower. Oh. Jisoo can't quite chase him down. Just, just not quite enough to kill Smitty J there. Was a little fortunate with his skull timing on that one, but uh, Jizu nevertheless TP back into lane. We'll see whether Smitty J opts for exactly the same. Yes, his TP does just get channel. Going for lane dominance and damage. Double Dorans, double longsword. Oh. trying to kill Selfie. Dead Might just get Ignite comes out as well, and Selfie's gonna tick, tick, boom, down. Koski gets first blood. Well, that was gonna be the worst thing that could happen for Schalke if Koski gets the one versus one kill against Selfie. Selfie couldn't stop the damage coming from Koski. 
doesn't flash out early enough and Selfie ends up dying. That is the snowball they did not want to see. Unexpected as well. Selfie's been the mid laner across the, the split that has really had these 1v1 outplay moments. He's been the guy showing up big. koscu has been much more reserved playing Cassio, playing Rise. Here, really shows up on this Katarina. Let's have a look at it again. Yeah, Koscu jumps to the first dagger. The second dagger even clipped Selfie and that was the difference. His selfie didn't get away from all of that damage in time. Koscu just punishing that mid lane matchup. We talked about how picking this Talia early does have a couple of tough matchups. If there's a burst mage that is able to do that on the other side, Koscu plays that exchange near flawlessly, gets the kill. Lulex has managed to gain himself a level advantage over Pride Soccer at the moment, and it's coming up towards the top lane, perhaps to see if he can catch out Jisoo. Bear Trap on the rope will pull him back, up to Eaton up. Yuki and Dreams are going to go aggressive here because Vander's going to get locked up, does have the thick skin. Yuki's low on mana, so can't go for the all-out engage, but he's going to keep chasing. Dreams flashes in, doesn't quite take down Vander. Exhaust juice heal as well from Shao Kanul Fear. Yuki's going to continue throwing out those Mystic Shots. Oof, both teams taking that trade and not really respecting the flow of damage through that. Look at top lane, Pride Sork is on his way. Yeah. Death charge <laughs> comes <laughs> out. <laughs> So it's an interaction we haven't really thought of. That's great. Depth charge away from the uh, charge away from the depth charge. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's one Can't of the, catch me. One of the reasons why we've started to see this cled a couple of times, as we said, we saw uh, Faxi trying to play it up against Soaz to a losing effort, unfortunately. But Koski wants the snowball bot side. Vanda and upset too far pushed up here. No vision on Koski. There is an exhaust up for Vanda. Koski's going to jump in. Devour comes down. Koski keeps going with the chase. Vanda's low. The thick skin's going to go down, and Dreams will take the kill. Koski dives though onto Ooh. upset, trying to bounce Ooh. his way around. Just can't get enough. Upset will take him down and now open up the curtains. Get taken <laughs> out oh, no. with the true shot barrage. You stand still, I'm sniping you down, says Yuki, and escapes the Sonic way. Oh, that was unfortunate for Upset. They thought that with the damage that Lulex would be able to continue, but oh, Upset didn't take into account that Yuki still had his ultimate. And as soon as he entered that uh, curtain call stance, it takes too long to break it. And Schalke on the back end of that. This has been good roams out of Misfits Academy as uh, Schalke go aggressive. Cos-Q is on the way down already, so Vander knows that he's basically doomed. Has to flash, get the Devour. Good timing on it, and the exhaust comes out. Vander does everything that he can do here to stay alive. Upset does a great job as well, stays alive and just, just, I laughed, I probably shouldn't have laughed. But you just don't think of it in the moment. I wasn't thinking about it, and as soon as it, fi as soon as it came and cast it to the bottom <laughs> side of that, oh, upset. That's uh, got to feel bad. Upset probably didn't think of it either, because no. Yuki hits level six off the kill onto yep. Vanda and gets enough mana from that as well to be able to use the true shot barrage. Oh, that's that's painful. That's that's just fortunate in favor of Misfits, Misfits Academy. Uh, and you can see now they've got a, a decent spot to be in. The Katarina still has picked up that kill now, has two assists on top of it as uh, Misfits Academy. This is more like game one and two, dare I say. Yuki's going aggressive once again, has the Sheen. As the tier stacking up, Pride Sorko is waiting around the corner, but this is Misfits doing what they need to do to force Schalke behind. And we heard it in, in the pre-series interview, Misfits saying sometimes if Schalke fall behind, they don't react that well to, to being in that situation, to being on the back foot. Vander's definitely on the back foot here as he tries to spit upset away. The true shot barrage will come out. He tries to use the thick skin to survive, but Misfits Academy are going to continue to chase down. Collateral damage doesn't oh, hit. They didn't Dreams kill him. is tanking the tower and they have not killed Vander. They didn't get the kill. Vander this time is able to do enough to survive. Koscu forced away from a mid lane fight and Misfits Academy again trying for a bot lane play. It doesn't quite pay off. Lulex has had a lot less impact in this game than Pride Stalker, which is the opposite of game three of this series. But Schalke, they haven't lost enough for this to be looking completely like game one and two yet. <laughs> they uh, still are in a decent spot. Exactly. And this is where the patient play we saw from them in game one and game two will pay off once again. They just need to take a step, take a breath, say, look, we can reset this game. We're not far behind at all. It's only 800 gold. And they'll know that. Like As much as they can't see the exact gold figures, oh. they'll know they're only a couple of kills behind. They'll know they're is not mine far, selling him no. too far behind on CS. They should definitely oh, be no. telling him no, because at the moment, 
He's just dead. Lulex tried to flash, tried to jump the wall, cannot do it. The curtain call opens up as they look for the snipe onto Koskyu, can jump over to Yuki. Great team play there. TP Forget coming in from behind in though. TP in Misfits behind them. Cancelled straight away. Second yeah. one cancelled as well. That's Ooh. smart because there's a Weaver's Wall possi possibility from Selfie. Yeah, Selfie had just uh, used just it used out it, behind. Yeah. It was as the TPs were coming through. I believe he was trying to box Yuki and Koskyu into the lane. Nevertheless, on this one, Misfits Academy continue to extend their lead, this time finding Lulex on the aggressive path. Lulex hadn't really cleared out all of the vision control there with the rest of the team, so Schalke caught on the wrong side of the river, and now they have to run away. We talked about Smitty J being on a carry, and we, you know, we alluded back to Vander's yeah. interview. He's got the Kled, but we haven't seen a huge amount of Kled across the split, and it seems very difficult to actually lock down exactly what the point of Kled is in this matchup. Well, there, there's a couple of things that, that Kled theoretically should do later on. He is a decent split pusher and flanker, and that is one thing that, that Schalke can work and build around. Um, also, you saw the interaction with the Nautilus is one part of that. Uh, the interaction with Katarina and her resets is going to be another part of that. So it, it, it's not necessarily a pick that specifically is like, it's going to crush Nautilus late on because Nort gets very, very tanky. Much more for the team fight, for that team play that we saw so well out of Schalke in the last game. There are a thousand gold behind as we enter the sort of middle portion of this game. Laning phase still going on. No towers really being chipped away at either by either of these two teams, but neither team really has a great tower push. Misfits are coming back again, looking for the setup. If they can get Koz in. Still no flash for upset. It'll be up in just a second. It'll be up actually by the time any fight begins. They've got river control, although there's one ward just spotting Yuki out as he steps up forward. And there is a Drake on the cards. It's an Earth Dragon, which is uh, Mountain Dragon, which is quite important, especially for that true damage to later dragons into the balance. Mini J is already down here in the mid lane, though. Um... <laughs> Charging underneath he's the tower, the he's going to get back around, oh. but Koski will just dodge away. Bear trap on a rope will not connect. <laughs> Actually um, gave him the escape. <laughs> I think that moment just, it needed the silence we provided it. It needed that space to oh. breathe as a play. But that's the problem with Clyde. If you commit, you're going in. Yeah, there's you, you can't cancel that out. It's not a lot of space for Schalke. Oh, oh Vandas Vandas canceled. Got canceled. Has to flash. That's a big summoner spell. Yeah. One of those rescue functions now, not quite so available for Vander. Flashing forward, we've seen it a couple of times where Dreams has saved Yuki or Pride Stalker and engages on that Tom Kent, so no longer there. And that's river control as well seceded because you can't step forward with a uh, Tom Kent that doesn't have that flash available. They've got an okay ward control in a moment. Shalka have one or two that will <laughs> spot out any dragons. And it's been a, a pretty tense and slow game. Misfits Academy are taking a little bit of a lead, about 1,500 ahead, 1,300 at the moment. But across the board, pretty even in every single row. No yeah. big CS discrepancies. I, I must say, though, that my confidence in Schalke's ability to bounce back in-game is quite heavily rocked. Looking at games one and two, how they played around what should have been a turtle in composition, I feel like even a slight lead for Misfits Academy is putting the pressure on Schalke now to do what they couldn't do in games one and two. And that's not something we thought would be a worry for the Schalke team because they were down against PSG, they came back into it. They were down against Misfits Academy in game two of their best of two and came back. Not in games one and two of this series. It's where discipline comes into it as well. You know, Schalke talked about it. They said, we're a disciplined lineup. We know what we need to do at what parts of the game. Their shot calling is a team affair rather than a yeah. single member calling it. And perhaps that's what cost them the first couple of games. Because when you're behind, it's very difficult as a team to make shot calls. Everyone goes quiet. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, I need to focus on winning my lane. G2 and Smitty are going to trade here. Pride Stalker is on his way up as well. The depth charge comes out. Smitty J will flash it. Still gets knocked up. But look at bot side. This is where the play is really happening for Schalke. This is what they need to do. And this is the kind of play that we had seen Schalke make throughout the regular split when behind, where it's defend on one side and make a play on the other. 
you don't want to go aggressive on both of these, and Smitty J knows that. That's why he's flashing away early, getting away from the situation, and Schalke have already taken Tower First Blood. Maybe now they can go mid lane and look for something, or at least the Dragon, and forgot that it was available as Ludex is taking it down. Getting the Earth Drake is great. Misfits Academy will trade it for a tower in the top lane, but a little bit slow on that. They lose out in just pure value of the objectives because it's a two for one in yep. favor of Schalke. Yeah, two for one. Now Selfie can just get away from this man. It eats him up. Another defensive tool against this Katarina. Koskou did use the Death Lotus there. Yep. Didn't use the Ignite. Jesus looking for the side flank on this because oh, there is Prize Talk on the way. Yes. Not so good. <laughs> but there's no depth charge. There is no charge either as that gets stopped. Prize Talk is just coming behind where the tower used to be. And Smitty J <laughs> is caught between a it's rock a and an trade. anchor. Don't think he's going to be able to get away from this. Prize Talk will get him down. Misfits Academy 5-1 up. And this time Schalke don't have anything to react with. The True Shot Barrage comes through. Yuki clears out the range minions and Misfits can hold on to the tower. What they're doing here though is putting Koski out in the side lane. Uh, basically hoping Selfie is the one that comes out to him. I don't think they're going to keep Koski in the side lane for like the entirety of the game because while Cat can move from lane to lane quickly and can 1v1, so much of this comp is uh, based on getting those kills in the fights and resetting, as always with the Katarina composition. This just felt like overextension from Smitty J <laughs> more was. than anything. It was. It just after we praised him for playing defensively on the one side as the rest of Schalke make a play on the other, everybody else on Schalke isn't making a play. Smitty J is trying to play forward in the lane and ends up getting taken down. He knows it at this point, but this is where this fatigue plays into decision-making as well, right? We're now in game four of a five-game series. TP's coming through. We're going to go into a fight. Yeah, Jason looking for the flank. Deadly Flourish will land and lock him up. It's the Nautilus. Very tanky, even with Smitty J teleporting in. Not sure they chase this down. Bear Trap on a rope comes out, as does the Curtain Call, but Misfits Academy are just going to back away from this one. They retreat. There is a Weaver's Wall trying to lock out Dreams. He'll get caught on the wrong side. Flashes over it. Curtain Call doesn't connect, and now actually Misfits Academy might look for the re-engage. Jisoo came back in. Here's Koskyu. Jumps in. Exhausted straight away. Death Lotus. Koskyu's dead. One will fall in response as Schalke continue to look for the trades. They've got two. They've got Skarl and Smitty J will joust his way away. Jumps over the wall. Ludex does aggro the Rift Herald and actually Misfits Academy might continue to look for this but Schalke somehow get out alive and take down two. Key exhaust and then crowd control came out from Schalke onto Q, and you can see how difficult it is for a Katarina to go in when all of those tools are available. Both exhausts look like they got used at almost the same time out of Schalke, which is excusable because it saves the fight for them. We'll take another look. They box Dreams in, Flash comes through to get Dreams out of the fight, and they drop the wall, which allows Misfits Academy to actually reposition. Koski's already half health at the beginning of this, jumps onto upset, instant devour, great health from Vanda, exhaust was on, and Jizu dies. It was Jizu that had taken so much damage throughout the entirety of the fight, and Misfits Academy could not continue. Look at how low everyone is on that, yeah. on that team as well. If that exhaust hadn't come down straight away, you're losing at least one or two members. Koskyu still had his ignite as well at the end of that fight, so decided not to go in all guns blazing, but this is, the, this is Schalke's decision-making. Mm -hmm. This is their shot calling, and you wonder whether Misfits needed to take the fight. It felt perhaps yeah. like they may, they may have overstepped ever so slightly. Smitty J is going to chase in here. There's a teleport behind him, though. Koski's going to try and dodge around. The Abyssal Voyage used. Koski's going to go down towards the bottom side, but Nautilus Jisoo decides he doesn't want to be there because Schalke had four. This is the thing is, Katarina can 1v1 selfie. He cannot 1v1 Smitty J and Koski just didn't really predict that situation well enough. Smitty J is strong enough that he can auto-attack him down a couple of times, and that spells the end. And this is Schalke's decision-making really yeah. coming to the fore. Misfits Academy overstepping ever so slightly. We've seen Q getting caught out, and this is where Misfits Academy really need to step up their game and understand how they want to play into Schalke. Yeah, and there's some key items that I think Schalke will end up getting. Um, that will really help against this Katarina. I'm anticipating at some point a locket coming out from Vanda. Mm -hmm. Get that shield yep. for the team. Obviously, redemption core item already there as well. The same kind of thing you preemptively, if you can get it down as people are starting to lose their health through that exhaust, the timing should just about work out. Then you get the Zonias for selfie at some point. Upset has enough with a Devourer to keep him alive, and Smitty J will end up getting a Guardian Angel, and you really run into a difficult time for Katarina because she's very unlikely to get fights 
within the rotation of those items being on cooldown for a second time. That's what we were saying in picks and bans to some degree as well. Koscu is the AP threat here for Misfits Academy. Ah. There's a lot of magic resist being built up on the side of Shao Kanufi. You just said, ah, I didn't We've actually see. gone low damage for Misfits. Yeah. It's Iceborne Gauntlet. Uh, Ezreal, everybody recently has been opting towards the Trinity Force. Iceborne gives you great ability to kite. Does give you decent damage on your Qs, but that really is just about it. It's a lower damage build that you need to supplement with damage from elsewhere, which would be great if it was reliable and not a Katarina. Like, Kat can carry the team fights, and if Schalke make a mistake and don't have an exhaust available, then Kat will win the fights for them. But on their own, very difficult for Misfits Academy. Like, now the exhausts are back up. Schalke are safe again. And Misfits Academy just wondering how they take a fight as well. Yeah. Smitty J pushing up in this side lane. Jisoo can counter push, but can't really deal with the Cled. Has got a sheen for himself. Now Smitty rotates quicker, of course, because he has that charge if he wants to get around the map. I think the other difficulty about Iceborne is that there's so many ways of Schalke closing distance quickly that you're not really kiting a Kled or a Talia yeah. or a Lee Tom Kench. Or, or a Tom Kent. Lee, yeah, there's a lot. You, you can kite, you kite the, the Jin. Yeah. Yes. As he pops the Curse and Core, you can stop him from moving Don't from worry. that spot. As, as he's 2,000 range away, yeah. you can. <laughs> it could still work. Yeah. Um, it makes you a little bit tankier as well if the yeah. Kled does get on top of you. Gives you perhaps another second or so to try and escape. Extra, but, you know, CDR. Yeah. It's not like you get that from other sources anyway. Schalke once again going for their second dragon of the game. We've seen in games they win their objective controls just that much better. They took all the dragons last game, took the Baron, didn't lose a tower here. They've lost one, but are still looking pretty darn dominant. Jisoo's going to get caught out by Smitty J. The rest of Misfits are trying to respond, but the Weaver's Wall comes out. Salpiashi on the wrong side gets taken out. Misfits Academy take one in response. The Depth Charge comes out. Here is the Curtain Call. Jisoo trying to flash away the heal. Use and Dreams flashed in the way of the Curtain Call shots. Smitty J now on the retreat, backing away. Can't do it. Koscu gets one. Reset. He's looking for two. He's looking for three. He's looking for more, but Misfits Academy can't quite get close. Close enough. Flash in. Koscu, Lulex dead. Now the Death Lotus upset. Not going to be able to get away unless he flashes. It's a triple for Koscu and the Katarina pops off. There's the mistake out of Schalke. And is it the mistake that kills their summer split LCS hopes? Because Misfits Academy are moving to the Baron. They're two games up in this series. And a, a costly oh, Koscu. mistake. Koscu will find upset. It's an ace. Koscu gets an unofficial quadra. And he has been unstoppable this game. The Baron's going to go down for Misfit. This is only the fifth Baron Schalke Nulfir have ever lost in the Challenger series. And it might be the last Baron they ever get to contest. And this was how the fight started. Schalke going on to Jizu. And you can see Selfie got pulled off the wall right into three members of Misfits. Didn't take it all the way to the end. The shots from the curtain call are doing nothing at this point from upset, and they're trying to get the rest of the team out. But look at it, low health first reset. Low health off the second one as well, and it's only a matter of time. The exhaust is early. They're trying to create as much space, but the flash into the bouncing blade. Koski with the death lotus opens it up. Vanda didn't get the gray health, and Misfits Academy are in full control of their destiny. It looks to be almost inevitable that they'll take down Schalke. Inevitable it may seem, but we have seen so many twists and turns today. Misfits Academy taking the first two games. Oh, with Smitty the first J's overextended. Of the day. Smitty J might get collapsed upon here by Misfits. I'm not sure they get in range. Pride Stalk is going to jump the wall, but they just forced him back. They're looking for towers. They're looking for gold. They're looking to get themselves too far ahead for Schalke to contest. Yeah, they have to just weather everything that Misfits Academy are throwing at them and Schalke right now. It is not looking hopeful. Seven, three, and two on this Katarina. Gunblade, Zonia's, Void Stuff, Sork Boots, 10 stacks on the Dark Seal. Cosque has been trying at this since spring 2015. And again, he's on the cusp of the promotion tournament. He's been here before, though, and it has not paid off for him. Let's have another look. At this mid lane, Koski jumps in onto Selfie. Just takes Just him down. gets him. It's great. Ignite takes Koski. down. Vander couldn't get there. No flash on Vander. 
It's interesting you mentioned self, uh, Koskyu's score as well, because before that fight, I had written down a point saying Koskyu was 2-1-2 at the start of the game. He was mm -hmm. then 2-3-2, and my expectation was Schalke being able to play around him well enough for right. him to go like 2-5-2 at the end. He's now 7-3-2, picked up five kills very quickly recently. The Weaver's Walk will come down just to try and split the team, but Smitty's, Smitty's on in. the wrong side. He jumps over the wall with the charge, and here comes the redemption. Yuki in the back line still putting a lot of her down as Selfie gets destroyed. It's a double for Koskyu. He's going deep. Misfits are looking for this one. They'll get another tower. They have broken Schalke down. That's the inhibitor going down in favor of Misfits Academy. And they've gone from being in full control it? to having a hand already on the promotion tournament spot. They are taking the inhibitor. 25 seconds on Selfie from undefeated to out of the promotion tournament. Misfits are closing in on killing the Schalke dream. Koskyu jumps in once again. The Death Lotus is the death knell for Lulex. The first Nexus Tower falls, the second the target for Misfits. They're going to take it down as well. Koskyu's legendary and Misfits Academy are going to take the game. I cannot believe what I am seeing. Misfits Academy, it's just the Nexus in front of them. Selfie and Smitty trying to stop them, but Misfits cannot be stopped. They'll take the Nexus, they'll take the game, and they'll take it three and one. Against all the criticism, against all the predictions, Misfits Academy, Three games to one have shut out perhaps the best performing challenger lineup we have ever seen here in the European Challenger Series. And in what a statement series to do it. I'm just shocked, in all honesty, especially with that last game, because Schalke looked like they were playing as Schalke do. Schalke looked like they had it, and Misfits Academy said, not today. Today is our day. They came up, they rose an inexperienced team, and today they have shown their mettle and shown why they deserve a spot in that promotion tournament. Pure elation as the uh, final moments went through for Misfits Academy. That's got to feel good. Everybody counted you out already. And you show up on the day, the first two games go convincingly your way, and game four is the most competitive of the series, and you take the win. Just superb play by Misfits all around, and they came back straight into it. So much mental strength from them to be able to take down Schalke Null Fear when, in all honesty, after Schalke started to win some games, it looked like it was done and done and lost for Misfits Academy. It looked yep. like they had lost the momentum in the series, which can play such a big factor. And this will send shockwaves through because Schalke with the lineup, everybody had said, were, were destined to be on the route to a showdown with Origin. Everything the Schalke organization has put into Challenger over the last split after being relegated is all for just a summer spot in Challenger Series and it's Misfits Academy that have earned their way. And I have to come back to Pride Stalker as well. He played so well in those first two games. In fact, in three of the four games, he went unkilled. Just dominant play by him, incredibly impactful from that jungle role. He had Lulex's number on so many different occasions. Cos Q as well. It's, it seemed like every game a member of Misfits would step up and say, OK, today's, this game's my game to show myself. This game's my game to prove that I deserve a spot in those LCS promotion games. And now looking like it's the cusp of glory for them. A lot of these players have been waiting around in the Challenger Series for a while. Look at Yuki, look at Koskyu. They've been waiting for their chance to reach those big leagues, and it's just around the corner. Commiserations, of course, to Schalke. Many experienced heads there. I'm sure they'll be able to take on the loss, take on board what they need to change, take on board how they need to play next time they meet up in one of these playoff spots. But today it is Misfits Day, and I can it's just such an incredible game. An underdog story through and through, you have to say. There's a lot still left on the cards, though, for the Challenger Series. This split, of course, we have next week Paris Saint-Germain taking on Fnatic Academy. After that, we've got, the, we've got a week off, and then we've got the promotion tournaments coming up as well. I cannot wait for more games of League of Legends, and I can tell you who else cannot wait. It's Misfits Academy. I'm sure they're coming off this one with a true sense of joy and jubilation, a word I wouldn't usually use when it's just talking about playoffs, but this was such an upset that I think it is a well-deserved word indeed.
I believe in just a couple of moments we have an interview with a couple of the Misfits Academy players. Stress is getting set up for that at the moment.